Today, we received a warning from the Department of Homeland Security. And today, I wanna to address where this warning is coming from, why they feel the need to come out with this warning at this time, and what you should expect moving forward. The interesting part about this is that experts believe this right here, what happened today, is going to set a terrible precedence moving forward. So I'll break that down in just a moment, but all I ask is one thing, takes two seconds, go ahead, hit that like button if you enjoy these daily updates, and now let's begin. So what did the Department of Homeland Security just do? Well, before we get into that, we need to address some of the issues that are happening here in the United States so that you can better understand what they just said and why they're trying to put a stop to what is going on. And it's because of this right here. We are seeing fights all over the US. We're seeing protests. Just the other day, we saw a massive one at Columbia University. We've seen them at Yale. We've seen them at uh, so many different universities around the US. Well, this article from Fox News says anti-Semitism on campus surges as agitators take over. Many people are extremely upset because of the wars going on between uh, Israel and Iran or Israel and Hamas and the war between Russia and Ukraine. We're seeing these, these protests happening all over. Well, the issue that we're facing is that the United States government has just secured $95 billion and they're gonna start sending billions and billions of dollars. About $60 billion is going to Ukraine. We're gonna see a lot going to Israel as well. But the people that are protesting the, the war and protesting Israel, well, they don't like it. Here's the problem. These protests, it says conflict between university protesters and police spreads beyond Colombia. Here's the problem. We are now starting to see the United States government get involved. And today, we learned what the Department of Homeland Security has to say about it. Here's the thing that you need to understand. It says foreign students could face a harsher penalty than suspension for anti-Israel rioting, according to the Department of Homeland Security. It says anti-Israel protests on college campuses are on the rise across the United States. Now, here's why this is such a big deal. So does the Department of Homeland Security confirmed on Wednesday that foreign students could potentially face deportation if they are suspended from their courses while on a student visa, just as anti-Israel protests has, have engulfed Columbia University and other American colleges. Now, what's interesting about this, and let me know uh, what your thoughts are as well, but what's interesting is that we have seen the Biden administration come out and allow more people into the United States than any other administration before us, right? So many more. So they're bringing more people into the US, some that they're flying in, some that are just walking across the border and we're allowing them in, but there are so many more migrants, okay, foreign people coming into the United States, some of which are students, some of which are tourists, some of which are coming over on an employment visa. But here's the question, and, and this, is a, this is a big problem, is now we are trying to uh, prevent their freedom of speech. And again, it's on a college campus and some of these students are getting suspended. So once you're suspended, you cannot go to class. And if you don't go to class, they will deport you. They will pull your visa. Here's the thing that has a lot of people worked up is how does this differentiate between a student versus a, an employee? For instance, Let's say you are here on an, an uh, employment visa and you decide you want to protest and you want to have a, a higher minimum wage. You wanna get paid more money, you wanna work less hours, you want more benefits, whatever it may be. Can the United States government pull your visa and deport you? Just a question. What if you're here on a tourist visa and the location that you are going to is not really touristy. You're not spending enough money here in the United States and they say, you know what? That's not a tourist location. You either go to this location or we're gonna send you back to the country you came from. What happens when you are here because of a specific reason? Maybe it's you're here because you're, you're taking care of a, 
an ill uh, parent or uh, some family member. They get better, send you back, right? What if you're here because now you're married? You married a US citizen, so you wanna be here, but then, you know what? Ah, the relationship's not going well, you guys decide to separate. They send you back. What's interesting about all these situations is that this is exactly what people are talking about right now, as of today. They're wondering, where does this end? Because they say the Biden administration is allowing all these people into the US, but then just because they are protesting what the Biden administration is doing at this time, now they wanna send them back? How does that make sense? How does that make sense? Now, keep in mind, these protests are not going to stop. These protests, started happening even before the foreign aid bill, okay? There is a foreign aid bill that was just passed uh, today. President Biden signed this into law, okay? Right here, it says Biden signs foreign aid bill providing crucial military assistance to Ukraine. It's not just to Ukraine though. Yes, it's $61 billion to Ukraine. And it says right here, it says the aid package passed by the Senate late Tuesday evening and worth $95 billion in total, includes nearly $61 billion in aid to Ukraine, $26 billion to Israel, and $8 billion for the Indo-Pacific. The package also includes, which I've talked about twice just today, uh, the, uh, the plan of eventually banning TikTok here in the United States. But the big one is this one right here. They, there are so many different anti-Israeli protests happening right now. And sending additional $26 billion to Israel is, for many people, out of the question. It's absurd. Why are we sending them $26 billion when more of that money could go to the, the Palestinian people? That money should go to somewhere else. Because even Benjamin Netanyahu has not really agreed with what President Biden has told him. They, they haven't sided together. They've been on opposite sides of this for months and yet the united states just agreed to pass an additional 26 billion dollars to israel how does that make sense this is why some expect we are going to see more protests here in the united states it's going to happen uh, at colleges at universities at the campuses but here's a big one here's a question i have if you are protesting let's say on a bridge let's say in brooklyn or san francisco right the golden gate bridge or even you're protesting right outside of, a, of an airport, like in Chicago at O'Hare Airport. Could we actually not deport people, but if you're on a bridge, could you lose your license? Or if you are protesting right outside of an airport, especially a, a major airport like O'Hare, could you potentially be put on the no-fly list? These are the questions that the American people are asking. Right now, I have no idea. All I know is the Department of Homeland Security is giving us this warning. My question to you is how far will the Biden administration go? How far will the police go? And will we see people lose their license, get put on a no-fly list, or just be deported from the United States? Well, I'm not sure, but that's something that we're going to find out very soon. So as soon as we get more information on this, I promise I will bring you all the latest news and updates. But that is what we know as of today. So again... Thank you guys for watching. Consider subscribing and I'll see you guys on the next one.